Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this machine may look very familiar but it's actually completely different to the one we tested before. Now about a week ago we looked at the Minisforum NAB6. This was a little PC with an i7-12650H and 16 gigs of DDR4. This is the slightly more expensive model that features an i7-13700H and along with the faster processor we do get Intel Iris XE graphics and DDR5. This is dual channel DDR5 clocked at 4800 MHz. Now it's the Iris XE graphics I'm particularly excited about and today I want to see how well they can run games. So just like the NAB6 or the NAB6, the NPB7 here has all the ports you could ever wish for. It's a great little machine. It's ideal if you're lacking in space, you want something fast and powerful that can sit atop your desk without taking up much room. But of course, it is the Iris XE graphics that are the start of the show because if you're bored of that office work, that homework, and you want to play a few games, well, we should be able to do so. So let's get into it and see what this integrated GPU can do. This i7, by the way, the 13700H, will actually turbo to 5 gigahertz on a single core, which is quite impressive. You may see it hit that figure occasionally, but more often than not in multi-core um, applications, you know, gaming, things like that, you're not going to see near that. Now, first up, we have some eSports titles. These are the games that I would expect to run well on the Iris XE graphics. Now, I don't think Intel are anywhere near AMD's integrated graphics when it comes to gaming, but they certainly are getting there, and I'm looking forward to seeing what we can expect from iGPUs as we move forward throughout this year and into next year. I think there's going to be some pretty exciting stuff from both companies. But as for this Minisphora machine, well, they certainly know how to pack a punch or how to pack a lot of power in into a tiny little system and here in Overwatch 2 70 FPS on average with a few little dips and drops here and there but this is an improvement over the previous machine which had UHD graphics of course and it is a little smoother overall. For Fortnite we were averaging 68 FPS with the low preset now I didn't use the performance mode here I stuck with the standard DX11 mode for 68 FPS on average again with a few dips and drops here with the percentile numbers this isn't anything too out of the ordinary that I usually see with Fortnite on various hardware to be honest so this was another nice result for the Iris XEI GPU within the Minisforum NPB7. A really nice little machine so far, I think. And it's one I edited this video on. No trouble there either. I think the DDR5 with this processor really helps. Just like before, I love the easy accessibility as well. I mean, you just pop the lid right off, as you saw in the intro, and you can add whatever RAM you like and whatever storage you like if you were to buy this one bare bones to save a little bit of money, of course. In CSGO, we have 162 FPS on average with a few little dips and drops here and there. 44 FPS was the 1% low and 18 was the 0.1% low. The main stutters occurred when I got wiped out, which, as you've probably become familiar with on this channel, happens to me quite frequently. Not the best CSGO player out there, I'll happily admit. Now let's move on to some of those beefier AAA games. I thought we were going to struggle a lot more here, but with the help of XESS, Intel's upscaling technology, set to balanced in this case, we saw 46 FPS on average with pretty decent percentile lows. Now I actually really like the way XESS looks. In some cases it does look sharper than AMD's FSR. I think it depends on the game really. Performance wise, when using an Intel processor like this, um, you're going to see very similar performance between the same XESS preset and the AMD FSR preset. Again, it can go either way depending on the game. There might be one or two frames in it with XESS in favour and there might be one or two frames in favour of FSR. Totally depends on the title. The Witcher 3 though benefits from XESS, especially in those busier town areas. Marvel Spider-Man Remastered, again with XESS set to balanced and the low preset, not very low. We were able to stick with low here at 1080p, 39 FPS on average, again with decent enough percentile lows. There were no major stutters here. Now for everyday use and editing, things like that, I mean the i7-13700H is really quite impressive, especially as it consumes about 45 watts of power most of the time within this system so the fact that it can run games as well is quite impressive 
and I think if you do want to play a few AAA games, you're going to have an okay time providing you're not wanting 60 FPS. As always, machines like this aren't designed primarily for gaming, but it is always nice to see them capable of it. Forza Horizon 5, 1080p with the low preset and TAA now. No FSR needed here. 45 FPS was the average with a 1% low of 29 and a 0.1% low of 15. Now I took this or these performance figures from one of the many in-game races and this is where the game is going to perform worse. Most of the time though, uh, these percentile lows reflected the occasional stutter that did occur but it was nothing that really felt too bad and I think overall performance was really nice indeed. It would be interesting to see how something like this would compare to one of AMD's older APUs, something like a 3400G. So far so good though and this Minis 4 and Mini Machine is really impressing me. It always amazes me how much power you can squeeze out of these little machines these days and of course the processors within them. Elden Ring using the sweet spot resolution of days gone by 900p now with the low preset. 44 FPS was the average. I started with 1080p and we were seeing about 30 to 35 FPS so you could stick with 1080 if you wanted to or you could even go with 900p and perhaps up the settings. Maybe switch a few things to medium. I felt that the low preset was best though because as you'll see by the on-screen figures there were still a few dips towards 30. Grand Theft Auto 5 ran better than expected. Normal settings which is the equivalent to the game's lowest settings with FXAA enabled and the detail sliders set to halfway. 80 FPS on average was really good with a 1% low of 63 and a 0.1% low of 58. We definitely could have gone higher here in terms of those settings. We could have set a few things to high, I think, including texture quality most probably, and that would have certainly made the most difference in terms of the visuals. Red Dead Redemption 2 with the ultra textures, of course, to keep it looking its best, and AF times 8 with TAA medium. Geometry LOD was set to max, and the grass LOD was set to 2 out of 10. Everything else was lowest. Now, we do have the option to enable FSR here, or we can actually turn the in game scaling down so we can run it at like native 75%, which would definitely be better. I kept it at native 1080p, and to my surprise, we still saw at least 30 FPS, 35 in fact, even in busier areas like Valentine. 29 was the 1% low. You're not really going to see it much below the high 20s in terms of frame drops, so that's quite impressive considering we're not using a discrete graphics card. And Red Dead really does still look fantastic, even if you just put the textures on Ultra and set everything else to low. Finally, another big one, Cyberpunk 2077, this time with XESS set to balanced. XESS has been a bit of a lifesaver today, as uh, FSR usually is. The lowest settings here gave us 33 FPS on average. Now you could drop the XESS preset to performance, or you could go Ultra Performance with FSR for a few more frames. But this keeps things looking sharp. I always enjoy my time with these mini machines. I think this Minis Forum NPB7 is another great example of how much power can be packed into one of these small form factor systems. I like the accessibility as well of the pop-off top and all the I.O. ports around the machine make it very handy for anyone who likes to plug multiple things in. I hope you've enjoyed a look at it anyway. I hope you have found the power of the iris xe graphics interesting let me know if it performed better than you thought worse than you thought always leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments because i love to read them if you enjoyed this one leave a like leave a dislike if you didn't subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully i'll see all of you in the next one